All right. So thanks for coming back to the Bigfoot Society podcast. We have the pleasure of uh, having Melissa Berrickman uh, as the person we are interviewing today, which is amazing. Thank you for agreeing to come on, Melissa. Uh, Thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely. And would you mind uh, sharing uh, a little bit about uh, who you are if uh, people are not, uh, do not know who you are? which okay, I would be surprised, so. but it's a possibility. So. Oh, geez. I don't think anybody knows who I am, but it's, <laughs> it's really hard to uh, put it in a description because I think we're all so many different things, but I am, uh, I'm married to Cliff Berrigman. Um, that's probably who, who more is. people know. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's, he was on Finding Bigfoot and okay. I actually met him on the show as I worked in production. Okay. And uh, so I, we, we started up a museum. We own the North American Bigfoot Center in Boring, Oregon. Awesome. We've owned that for about a year now. And I also do special effects makeup and I do sculptures and pretty much anything I could just create. I, I'm into that. So that is fantastic. Very, very cool. Um, so I was listening to a few, uh, few podcasts. You haven't been on a lot of things. So, but you've been on some interesting things. Uh, you've been on the Dive Bar podcast, which was kind of fun. And then there was uh, a gentleman who interviewed you and Cliff, who uh, you had done like some uh, commercial work for in the past or something of, of that regard. Um, but uh, that was pretty interesting. He, I wanted to, to ask you this. This is kind of like a, a off the cuff question, but I don't want to forget it. You'd mentioned that you were a, a counselor in Connecticut. I and that was. feels like there could be an interesting story there. Is that anything that you could, <laughs> I don't, so I grew up at a summer camp and I, I am very like drawn to that atmosphere, but um, can you tell me more about that? That's very cool. Yes. I love, I, you know, growing up, I never actually got to go to any summer camps, okay. but I was working at Hollywood video during the oh, summer man. between college break, you know, wow. and my friend, Mike Newell, he called me up and he said, Hey, we, we, you know, we're short staffed up in Connecticut. You mm -hmm. know, how do you feel about coming up here? And I, you know, I, I say yes to pretty much everything and that could be terrible, <laughs> but I thought, you know, I've been in Hollywood video for how many years now or whatever. I just felt like what a great opportunity to get out of where I grew up and experience okay. something I'm not used to and do things that scare you. And that kind of did, cause I didn't have a oh, background. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, well, what's a summer camp like? Mm -hmm. And it was so fun and it pretty is. much every eighties movie you've ever seen. About it it, it totally camp. is. Yeah, it totally is. And we were up thing. to no good, no yeah. good at all. Sneaking out. Lots of different things. <laughs> we were up <laughs> yeah. to no good. A lot of things you can't, you know, you don't want to put on audio or video, but, uh, right, and, right. but yeah, it's a lot of fun stuff. Is it, was it the setup where it's like, um, a mix camp or like you got the boys camp across the lake and the you know sneak across type deal it's like all those yeah. 80s movies it's totally cool. like that i mean i know yeah. i was called a nitnoy and i had 10 to 12 year old girls and i was cabin oh, okay. 8a and there was 8b and it was mostly all you know there's just separated by you know sex and then also yep. with age uh, just like in the movies so totally. it was really fun like britney spears was really popular so I would oh. come home and they would be like dancing and oh, jumping geez, around. Yeah. And it was, it was really cool to bond with some of them. And yep. I wonder where some of them are right now. You know, it was a really good experience for me. I get that. Yeah. And, um, and it was creepy because Blair Witch came out that summer and we had to take really? Oh, that's overnight. right. You yeah. mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. So oh my goodness. So did you, was that before the, the, um, before you worked at the camp or after or during that it came out it was during it oh was during. I, I i it had to have been or like right before i went i can't remember what month it was released um mm -hmm. but it was a summer you know and we had to go on one overnight they, they stayed with us for two <sighs> weeks and we would take them on one overnight as a group tent camping oh, and man. every time we would get wow. up in the morning there'd be piles of rocks outside of our <laughs> <laughs> and it was really scary <laughs> i love it that is so funny yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a great good, film i love that film so much mm. it's it's, a it's as creepy as i'll get out mm -hmm. um and i guess that guy who wrote it is coming out with a, another found footage film what? <clears throat> 
it was just it's in another podcast uh what was it i haven't i haven't listened to it yet but whatever it's not important but it's out there um it's like okay uh this is terrible someone's gonna get mad at me but it's fine um I can so, never think of any titles or names when I'm being interviewed exactly. or talking about it. I've exactly. been like five minutes later, I'll have it. So yeah. it's okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll wake up at 3 a.m. and I'll be like, that was the one. <laughs> exactly. Some of the weird stuff happens. Um, so you are, you said Boring, Oregon is um, right outside of Portland. Is that right? Yeah, it's about, uh, I would say 40, 45 minutes east towards okay. Mount Hood. That really mm-hmm. huge volcano, snow capped all year. It's beautiful. Oh, um, yeah. And my husband and I live in Sandy. So, uh, you know, Boring's actually a little closer to Portland, but it's only like 15 Mm -hmm. minutes away. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you actually, so you used to live in in Portland then? Yeah, we did. We did. We moved here about, I want to say three or four years ago. So, I can't remember. (laughs) Man, that's one of the, we were so close to almost moving there. But uh, my wife has, um, well, uh, so, uh, health condition that is not good in that type of climate. So oh. that put the kibosh on that, which is too bad because we fell in love with Southeast Portland. My goodness. Like yeah, that is great. the hipster heaven, right? Oh, but, it uh, totally is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it <laughs> yeah. is. My goodness. Yeah. Um, so something I've been, I've, I've been curious about is, um, so you got hired on to finding Bigfoot as like, um, it was like a, was it production assistant production. or? Yeah, actually it was. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, I took it because it was a, such a good opportunity to, you know, be on a big show like that. And um, I thought, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll say yes. Like I usually do. Mm-hmm. And it just, it, and I had no idea it would end up, you know, putting me together and with my future husband, you know, it's just, it's just crazy the way the totally. universe works like that. I was totally not in a place to even be there, you know, honestly, but it was perfect. And so for some of our listeners, let's say that like they're totally in the Bigfoot and they have no idea what production assistant is, is oh. <laughs> uh, maybe a summary of that. Basically you do, it's the first job you get what, you know, if you, if you want to go and work on a set, you know, you just, I want to be a PA and most of the time, you know, I I lived in Pittsburgh, so I didn't really get paid for a lot of stuff, but you're the grunt. You're, you're doing all the things for every department. You're throwing away trash You're you know, just it's like the base level. And I have been in the business for like almost two years or um, 10 years at that point. But Mm. I, you know, that was a step below, obviously, but before I was, but I always say, if you're modest, you'll always have a job. And you know what I mean? And it's just like, I'm not too good to do any job, honestly. After TV, I was a janitor at a zoo on the midnight shift. Like, I don't care. That sounds awesome. (laughs) It was awesome. Yeah. How has that uh, never come out anywhere? That's fantastic. I think you're the first person I've told. (laughs) All right, let's get into it. So what did you were a janitor at a zoo? I was, I realized that I could make more money because I knew I was going to come out here because we were dating for almost two years. And this okay. was like the end game. It was like me coming out here Sure. because I could not get him to come to Pittsburgh. That's for sure. There's um, no way Cliff's going <laughs> there's to a Pittsburgh. Big I don't know your husband, but I can guess that will never happen. <laughs> exactly. You're right. You're right about that. Yeah. Um, so uh, I figured, you know, I worked a couple shows in Ohio and okay. then I realized like I was just driving all the time, not making the money. And I, f- I found out that you make so much more money as a janitor in a union wow. for the zoo at midnight. And oh, I thought, well, that's interesting. Yeah. And I love gorillas. I love old primates. I, I just love all of that stuff. Yeah. So I, I figured, well, this is kind of interesting. And there were like two or three of us on at night. We worked independently of each other and we had okay. zones. And it was, if you're an introvert, like I, pretty much am. I mean, I can be extroverted when I'm comfortable enough, but mm. I, it was a perfect job because it was yeah. quiet. There yeah. were like, you know, there was an energy there that was weird and creepy and I just loved really? it. Yeah. What, what do you mean by that? Just like the weird, like animal energy or like, yeah, I mean, there have been people who have been attacked and, and killed um, by Whoa. lions, uh, elephant, okay. um, actually okay. African painted dogs killed somebody. So there's really? a little bit of like a weird energy. Jeez. There. What kind of, uh, was this out in uh, West coast area? This is said? Pittsburgh. Oh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. That's right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Man, that's and, crazy. Yeah. And, and, and I remember, and it was perfect though, because I was dating Cliff who yep. was, you know, three hours time zone 
uh, behind me. Yes. And I'd have to work at midnight, so I'd call him and have time to talk to him before I started my shift. You know, it was oh, like yeah, a nice, nice little. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I always remembered pulling in and thinking, you know, I don't really know that there's not a lion out there that someone yeah, forgot to know. close a gate That's because true. there's nobody yeah. here but me. And that used to freak me out. Oh man, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's crazy. Um, it is. Did I've you had ever, a lot of jobs. <laughs> did you ever hear like, you probably would hear like the animals like at night, they probably go nuts. Like yes, lions they do. and stuff. Oh man. Yeah, the, um, the snow leopard was the most terrifying. And I, I worked with this kid, I, I would really? train him, you know, he was gonna be a new cleaner and I trained mm -hmm. him and he shadowed me. He wouldn't get out of his car. Cause I, I said, oh, where'd you go? And he says, <laughs> I, I heard something <laughs> and here is a snow leopard and it would just do Whoa. this really weird high pitch thing. And I knew what it was because I was used to it, but he was like, I'm not getting out of the car. <laughs> Melissa, <laughs> do you know what it might've been? Do they do infrasound? Oh, you know, I to, don't to toss know. some some Bigfoot related yeah. stuff at you because Honestly. like some of the bigger predators, right? They do the the low things mm -hmm. that affect yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, this was more of a higher pitched thing. Okay, interesting. Um, but it wasn't. Yeah, I can't even do it with my own vocal ability. But right. it is. It was. It was yeah. creepy. But if you know what you, what it is, you know. I mean, I knew what it was. I wasn't scared. But this poor kid, I was like, oh, you poor thing. <laughs> and I, I walked him <laughs> down in the dark, and we went and we looked at it, and it still did the sound. I said, "That's what you're hearing. Don't worry, you're good." <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um. So another uh, question I had is: so is have you oh. Uh, have you been interested in uh, cryptids throughout your life or is it a thing where it's like, oh, I just happened to get this job. Uh, it's finding Bigfoot. Okay. This stuff is kind of cool. Let's get into this. Or like, were you kind of uh, interested in that sort of stuff beforehand too, growing up? That's a very good question. I get that not as well, well, well uh, said as you just now. That was really good. I can't even think right now. Sorry, but that was really well put. That was a good question. Um, I, I got to say, I, I was more into ghosts and mm. um, as, as far as cryptids, I think the most, you know, interested I was, was Mothman because I was from Pennsylvania. That was in Pl yeah. Pleasant, West Virginia. Yep. Yep. So every I episode comes back me, to Mothman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I had seen the show. I was a fan of it. I thought, I thought, what are these four doing? Like, what is going on with these people? I, I thought it was hilarious. I thought they were so fun. And then, I, you know, an opportunity, I thought, yeah. Um, but I got to say, funny. when I was in Turner, Maine for the episode, Ooh, that's the yeah. first vocalization I heard. Oh, man. And then I started to change my opinion on whether or not they exist. And I wow. do think they exist. Um, you know, live with Cliff for a you know, month and, you know. He can, there's so many, uh, you know, we have so much evidence at our house right now. You know, we have over 300 original casts and, you know, there's, even if one of those are real, wow. you know. That's so, crazy. 300 but, original casts. Yeah. Like, it's, that's got to be like your garage is just full of casts or I don't know. You probably have some is. amazing uh, way to <laughs> store them. I. .e. Yeah. He garage. actually uses, um, he uses baking racks which is a really, cause they have trays. You just pull out. It, it's really, That's so cool. <laughs> He's probably like, don't tell anybody my secrets, but whatever. Melissa, you're giving away the tools of the trade. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah. like, it's like those, these old shows I used to uh, watch as a little kid and like they're in the Smithsonian and they pull out the, the rack. So like the, the bones. So it's like that, but with big foot, that is it. Uh, it footprints is. on um, or cast on uh, baking trays. That's awesome. Yeah, that's exactly. And it's a great way to store them, actually. Really? Um, yeah, he, he's got quite a system. So. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Does it have to be like a certain um, uh, climate to keep those like from? No, you know I mean, I mean we, no? Use, um, we use uh, uh, Ultra Cal or no, HydroCal. It's a plaster. Oh, okay. And uh, it's, you know, as long as you're not, you know, getting them wet all the time, you know, as long yeah. as it's a dry, cool place, you're good. Okay, cool. So. It's more of like, you know, I wouldn't want to get them wet because plaster will break down eventually because it's water soluble. So makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Um, 
What's it like having a Bobo for a just buddy? showing up at your house for that six must nights. be amazing. That must be amazing, it. right? Yeah, I'm <laughs> just like, kidding. I love you, Bobo. You're like my brother. <laughs> yes, he was so, um, you know, and I could say that about all four of them. You know, they're just very kind and oh, yeah, welcoming. True. And I, and, and you know, Cliff and Bobo are really close in real life, too. And uh, yep. you know, he cruises up here okay. and will couch surf for a while, and um, you know, and, and that's okay, like, he's always welcome. And uh, he's just, he's just such a, a, a he, Bobo is an anomaly, you know? Yes. And he forever will be. Just love the guy. Well, probably <laughs> one of the best anomalies you can hope for. I mean, yes, yes. Yes. He seems like he's a cool guy from what, you know. Yeah. He, he would give you the course. shirt off his back. He would support mm -hmm. you. He, he's so kind, you know? Um, and actually Cliff and Bobo have a podcast too called uh, Bigfoot and Beyond. Not and it's plug. fantastic. It's, it's Oh, you listen the, to it? Yeah. Oh, oh. that's so come nice. On. It's, it's, you know, <laughs> I was going to say it eventually, but I didn't want to come <laughs> off as super fanboy. but, um, like it's really good. Like kudos yeah. to your husband and Bobo. They're good. Yeah. They're having really, uh, you know, they're just having so much fun with it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, with all the guests, really interesting guests and, uh, yep. I, I don't know. It's going pretty well so far. Yeah. And they seem like they are, uh, they're they're kicking it up a notch with um who they're starting to partner with which is it's very encouraging to see that yeah i think yeah, they got a revolver cool. i think that's the okay. network or something very like cool. that i very hope cool. i'm not saying it wrong but because they have I, like uh, ads come up in the middle of their episodes now which is cool so yeah and they yeah. read them right do they read them um some of them some of them it's like hey next podcast on iHeartRadio. and you're like whoa this oh whoa I okay like, i had no idea that, check, yeah that's just kind i of need to listen to the newer ones i guess <laughs> yeah they're good you should check out your husband's podcast i should, um, I really should. <laughs> so hmm, let's see oh uh another thing i was curious about is so have you always you're big into creating different things right now you create um I think I've heard that you've created like uh, the fingers, Bigfoot fingers for the museum, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you're very into like special effects and like, uh, you know, horror makeup and, and your Instagram has some crazy stuff. Like I, uh, every once in a while, I'll see a picture from it. And it's like, holy mackerel, some guy got bit by a shark. It's like, oh, it's just Melissa making some guy look amazing. <laughs> Thank goodness. <Yeah. laughs> but have you always yeah. done that uh, stuff growing up or is that something you got to, like you went to college for it or are you just like, that was your thing you know i gotta say i always had a passion for horror and uh mm, i think okay. what i didn't even know like special effects so much because I, I i think the first taste i got of something like seeing something being put on would be michael jackson's thriller rick baker you know mm. doing the makeup for the the totally. music video which still is kind of creepy to me at 41 yeah. i'm still a little scared that's but such a good video. the way that they turned him into that, I, I could not even, I had no idea how you could do that. And that, that to me was the starting point, I think, where I started to notice, oh, this is makeup. This is someone else's vision. They created this. And then there was a 19, I think it was 87. Okay. And I saw a movie called Summer School. Hmm. And it had Mark Harmon in it. And he was like really from young. From Double Bit? Wait, from yes. Double Dare? Yes. <laughs> I think it's, yeah, it has to be the same. Yeah, Mark Harmon. That's, that's and, gotta be the uh, same guy. If not, I'm gonna yeah. get called out, but whatever. Yeah, I'm 36, I I totally so think it is. we're similar in like, yeah, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, and I think Carl Reiner, I think directed that one. It was just so fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like they had to go to school and they didn't want to be there. So they made like eyeball, like poking out their eyeballs with the pencils oh, and then eating okay. it because it was yeah, dumb. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that movie was kind of, the start of it too i just remember those 80s okay. you know and so and you're like I, I can i could do that too i could make yeah but i never too, thought right? that i could go to school for that because i mean we're still hmm. old enough now that that wasn't an option really i mean i yeah, i went no. to school for communications journalism whatever but um cool. i mean yeah i mean it's no. good i jumped through the hoops i did the thing got a right. degree whatever but honestly yep. I would have tried to go to Tom Savini's school in Pittsburgh. Uh, actually, it's like mm. south of Pittsburgh. He okay. has a whole special effects, uh, really, you know, school there. And I would have done it differently. You know, I did. I didn't know. Mm. I know my family. We couldn't have afforded to send me there. I mean, it's right. real expensive. And and honestly, I tell kids now. You know, I, when I work on commercials or movies, they say like if they're an extra, they say 
you know, how do I get more acting jobs or how do I get into this? I said, volunteer to be a PA. Cause guess who you work for a director. Yep. Guess who casts yeah. in movies, directors, you know, do all the hard work, do all the production stuff. Exactly. And then you understand you'll be a way better actor if you do production because you mm -hmm. know, kind of like how everything works. And even with like effects, you know, just volunteer. I probably wouldn't even gone to college, no offense, but I probably would have just started making things and volunteering and, and getting jobs that way. That is legit. That is awesome. Yeah. Just very, do very it cool. when you're young and work at it and just try to connect with people and you will get a job. Hmm. You know, that's good advice. That's really not good to throw away college. <laughs> no, yeah. college is, is so good too, guys. Just get <laughs> it. It's like great. crazy. <laughs> Go to school. Yeah. <laughs> um, what would you say you're, so it's obvious you have uh, a big um, um, love for horror. Uh, when did that, when do you think that started out? Hmm. Probably in the eighties. Yeah. <laughs> so so like, oh, sorry, I'll be more specific, like as a little kid or like, is there something? So for me, like with Bigfoot, it's like, mm -hmm. I can remember watching in search of with Nimoy with my dad. Oh, and that's the yeah. thing that was like, boom, you know, you're into it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think mine too, uh, exorcist and Amityville horror. Oh, totally. I saw those way too young, honestly. <laughs> But I had an older <laughs> sister and she'd have her girlfriends over and I would oh, sneak in. Yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, Michael Myers, all those good, you know, I was just really classics. into it, you know? Totally. And like I said, I didn't know that you can actually do something with it or try to get a job or, you mm -hmm. know, but I just figured if, if you just, you know, that I, when I make stuff, you know, and I'll bring it in the museum to sell, like a severed Bigfoot finger magnet, or I have uh, these monster teeth mandibles that I paint up real gross and they're wet looking. And that's awesome. And Cliff's like, okay, we'll see if they sell. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, maybe some weirdo will come in and buy it. But most of this, like, that's not my crowd. You know, I know that okay. that's probably not my people yeah. that are going to be into that. Like, yeah, I think horror conventions and things like that. That's like, that's my people. You know? Yeah, sure. Totally. And, Do you go yeah. to horror conventions then or? like set up a booth or no I, haven't. no I usually just work with cliff like when we do something i just work a sure. stable um but okay. like i said it's it's good because we're interested in different things but we run the business and we have mm -hmm. different roles in that business but we work really well together so i think which is good if i was obsessed with bigfoot and i knew everything and i i had such a strong opinion about what i think it is or they are i think mm -hmm. that wouldn't really work out so well because it would be I, tricky wouldn't it yeah yeah. yeah. And I honestly think it's a great marriage because, well, uh, ooh, <laughs> double meaning, but uh, it's, it's just, I, I, cause we both let ourselves do our own things and yeah. be who we yep. are. And yep. uh, I don't know, it works awesome. out well. Very cool. Can you, um, I guess kind of leading into, I know you've talked about this in other places, but um, let's, so let's talk about like, why was it that you guys uh, felt um, compelled to create the, the North American Bigfoot Center? What kind of led into that? Well, you know, we, we moved out here and um, the show had been, you know, off the air for about two years at that time. I know. And we uh, had, you know, we had so much, so much stuff. You know, he's collected for 30 years. You know, he's, he's got wow. so many things. And we just discussed about what, what's our next move. What do you think? You know, do you want to go, do we want to work for ourselves? Do we want to try it? Does he go back to teaching? Like what, you know, that means he has to go back to school and get credit, right. you know, all that kind of jazz. Sure. And, um, you know, my film work here is very hit or miss. You know, I don't get jobs you know, one after the other, I'm, all, I am available. And I say yes, because I love working in that industry. <laughs> yeah. Anyone listening? Uh, but <laughs> I, I, I think we just sat down one day. We said, you know, let's have a, let's create a place where people can come and talk about their experiences or learn about Sasquatches. And they mm -hmm. don't have to feel like they're being judged or laughed yes. at because that it's a weird thing that people are, Oh, a Bigfoot. It is but weird. it's yeah. such a normal thing in our lives that I like, mm -hmm. there has to be people out there that would really love to come into a center and learn. And so we just decided to pull together and, 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 and make it happen. And we have a really great contractor, Keith. Okay. Uh, oh, it's his last name, but uh, Keith, 
I'm sorry, I don't know his last name right now. But uh, there's no he way Keith it. listens to this podcast. Don't worry, you're safe. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell him to. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. <laughs> hey, Keith. But <laughs> yeah, uh, right he, he did an amazing job uh, getting, he, he does carpentry, he builds okay. like all our exhibits, and he does oh, a great cool. job. So he really helped us do all that on the, in the back end of things. And then okay. Cliff decides what, you know, what exhibits I help with that too. And then if he needs fake rocks, you know, I made a big foot, plaster foot with hair and a bone coming out of it. Oh, <laughs> I was like, really? just weird cool. things like that. Yeah. Like we're just, what do we want to build? What do we want to make? What, you know, what's this going to look That's like? Awesome. So yeah, it's been really, really fun. And we've met so many amazing people and the support has been amazing. So we uh, thank you everyone who supports us. <laughs> so there's a there was a question where <laughs> i'm just i'm filling in questions i have from other interviews um oh yeah who's who's the person that walked through the door at the north american bigfoot center that you were like i wasn't expecting to see you here today is there anyone cool that comes to mind they're like oh oh wow. cool yeah, oh okay i'm like, like oh the, the mind, guy that like wow okay i thought you meant like the guy who brought in he thought a foot or maybe poop that's happened. Um, That's cool. Well, you know, I would say so far, uh, there's an amazing, now he, now he's one of our friends and he's really nice. Um, okay. His name is Kelly Lemieux. And he, uh, he came in with this big energy and he's just like, wow, what's going on? And he's like the funniest guy. And he's got all this energy and he's telling us all about Bigfoot. And I was like, wow, this guy is such a big personality and he's such good energy, you know? And uh and he started talking about touring and everything else. And we we're like, oh, you're in a band, you know? And he's like, yeah, okay. Buck Cherry. Remember the band oh, Buck that, Cherry? That's one of my favorite episodes of Bigfoot and Beyond. It's so oh good. Gosh. He it's is so, so good. good. I love that guy. Dude, I love him. Yeah. He's so good. I was not I, expecting oh. all that, you know? And and he's just such a fan of Bigfoot. And he knows a lot, you know? So he's smart. I, I was surprised that day. Yeah, he's totally smart. And uh, mm -hmm. he's a rad bass player and, you know. Cool. Um, you know, and just, just people who are 97, you know, man coming in who's 97. Yeah. That's so cool. You know, and we let him in for free. Cause you know, you're 97. I mean, come on in. Yeah. You're not going to charge dude. a 97 year old dude. <laughs> yeah. If you're, if you're still going, I'm not going to charge you. You know, I know I feel bad even charging, but we have to make a living. You know what I you mean? Do. You do. You gotta it, leave, it's like, keep the lights on. I know. Yeah. But I, yeah, just, just, just nice people who, you just, uh, you know, Kelly was, <laughs> he's, his personality is so great. And uh, like I said, now I can call him a friend. He's a good guy. And, nice. uh, you know, and I, it, it's nice because Cliff plays music too. So. You oh, know, really? Make oh, no, no, no. He does. Yeah. No, I knew that. He, he, yeah. uh, guitar, is it? Yeah. Is, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 He could play, he could play, uh, drums too. We have a full kit. Downstairs, oh, cool. But uh, okay. he doesn't really do much with that, but yeah, he's more guitar, but yeah. So you just never know who you're going to meet and hang out with. And yeah, so that's fun. awesome. That, that is, is really cool. <laughs> um, so it looks like there's some changes. So right now there's some fantastic, I, so I've never been to the um, North American Bigfoot center because truth be told, I live in central Iowa. It's not I was going to ask you where you're Oregon. from. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But uh, we have gone over to um, Portland and um, uh, Olympic, uh, peninsula in washington and stuff beautiful area Gorgeous. but we live in iowa for now so it's cool nice um so you got some fantastic exhibits in the center um is there anything yeah. cool uh coming down the road that people could uh look forward to showing oh, yeah. up that they might want to return to see anything yeah we're adding um six more panels uh this wow. this week we're you know it's gonna oh, take wow. some time with electrical but um we're having a thermal imager. Uh, so oh, uh, along yeah. with Stacy Brown, uh, we have a whole entire exhibit with Stacy Brown footage from Florida. One of the really? best um, uh, infrared uh, shots of a Bigfoot at night. Okay. It, it's really epic. It, so we're working on that now. I just proofread it two nights ago. So I think okay. it's at the printers. It's good. So then we're going to hook up an infrared camera so that people can see what they look like. I like that. That's vision. a cool idea. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. So we're trying to like when we first opened, we just were so, you know, excited to be open, but it wasn't polished. 
I got to be honest, you know, it was as good as it was going to get for that time. But as we, we've worked so much more into it now that it's more polished and professional. And uh, Mm -hmm. we even have a a cabin theater inside uh, that's actually a little movie theater that people can go in and watch uh, a chapter of about a Clackamas River photo from a trail cam. That's really good. Uh, Yeah, we we have a life-size patty that we have. Uh, It's a picture, but with, with the foot attached to it there's some really nice visuals oh in there. okay so people can like stand up next to it and be like oh, yeah it's actually really big yeah 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 like we that. have the mattress really prints good. and then we're going to add some audio step pad stuff that i'm really into haunted houses so i'm like honey we need to make yes. this like more so yeah. i got um fright fright props i believe that's where i bought everything from but they have like this mega screen box and this this pad that you step on so we're gonna get all nuts and crazy in there if it's up to me i i'd be all out but you know i don't want to like have anyone have a heart attack because they're scared so i have to well be that's true you can put yeah. a warning on the door i guess but that yeah, cliff has to reel really me suck. in yeah, yeah i know um, he's like it's not halloween all the time i'm like oh oh yeah i guess right. not. <laughs> um so. Because, yeah, in the other interview, you had mentioned, and I, I think this was pre-COVID uh, mm-hmm. that you did that interview, but you were thinking about doing, like, a Bigfoot haunt thing, maybe? Yeah. Um, but that's probably maybe yeah, not gonna another happen. year. Yeah. No. But I think I that's mean, still we are a really good a, idea. Thank you so much. And yeah. I, I know we're going to eventually have, we're probably about two clicks away from doing the Yeti cave. Behind all the exhibits, there's a cave that we're going to oh. be building eventually. But we're kind of waiting to see you know, how this whole thing works out with COVID and, you know, know, we don't want to put a whole bunch of money into something if we're not really sure if it can stay open. So we're trying to kind of hold off on that, but it's, it's, you know, it's coming if if everything works out. (laughs) So keep it. So yeah, keeping the lights on. Um, Yeah. You had mentioned, uh, or you, you or Cliff mentioned that there is like the potential of a Patreon. Oh yes. Okay. So I should Please. mention also, yes. You so, know that it would be just like, it would be amazing oh, if you set that up. You know, it'd be like. Yeah. I'm so excited to start that. And yeah, because yeah. membership. I mean, I'm so excited about that. I, uh, but we, we try to figure it out. We're not real techie mm-hmm. people, but right. I will say we just hired Connor Anderson from Colorado. He's mm-hmm. just moved oh, yeah. here and he's currently oh, living with about. us. And we love yep. that. We love that guy. So we really trust him. Um, he's been doing really great work. He's mature. He's modest. That's what like most importantly, yep. I want someone in there who's not going to be like a know-it-all, you know, he's Toast. so nice. And um, so we brought him in and not only is he going to do a lot of shooting videos because he has a, mm-hmm. a, you know, really good film background yep. and he, he's, he's 29. So he can like tech stuff. Yeah. You know, he can figure out Patreon <laughs> way quicker than Cliff and I can. So true, um, true. now that we have another, person on board, Connor Anderson, um, you know, it's going to be so nice because Cliff and I, A, we're going to have a little more time to do other work that we have coming, yep. but yep. also someone who loves Bigfoot as much as we do and wants to, the, the business to excel. So That's exciting. I'm so excited that he came. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. That's good to know that you guys are still going towards that uh, because I think that could really um, help give the the center the extra boost that it might need during this time where yeah. uh, i'm sure people are starting to to come back but mm-hmm. i mean i know yeah. everything is affected as well you know it is you know we're just kind of like day by day that's why i just keep telling myself mm-hmm. just day by day you know don't get don't read the news three times a day because yeah. i'm yeah, obsessed with like well, what's going on now you know but um day no. by day and people have been coming um you know and supporting every day our numbers are good and that's we you know we we can't say it enough how grateful and i can't even believe that mm-hmm. like a i own a business um and two like it's a bigfoot museum but <laughs> that people come and i mean we've been building it for so long that it's just, you could like cry about it because you're just like, I can't yeah. believe people want to come here. And then hearing them in the back laughing or enjoying yeah. it, it is like so heartwarming. I, I can't say it enough. That's awesome. And, and you know, it's because you uh, you totally hit the nail on the head where it's just, so people in this uh, field are just, they're looking for a place where they're not going to get judged or like say you're crazy, get out of yeah. here. Like it's just a place that they can go and they're like, oh, okay. Every everyone here is cool. 
I can be. Yeah. So I have a ton of people around the world that listen to this podcast, but I'm very selective who I tell in real life that, yes, I have a podcast called Bigfoot Society because I know some people are just going to be like, dude, what are you doing? And, you know, it's whatever. But, yeah, yeah. Um, they yeah. just need – people just need a safe place. And for for us, it's the North American Bigfoot Center. So. Thanks yeah, and that. families too. Oh, you're welcome. And and families, you know, it's 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 been so amazing because honestly, you know, summertime, kids are home. They've been home for a very long time oh, now. Yeah, sure. And we get so many families. Really? And people from out of town, Texas, Florida, Georgia, wow. Iowa, Kansas, lots of Idaho, Nevada, Utah, Washington, yeah. obviously. But um, mm-hmm. it's just so nice that they come in. And it gives a family something to do because there's really totally. not that much besides eating, you know, or whatever. I mean, boring, around here, there's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, well, because you, you're right next boring. to a pizza place, right? We are. Yeah. It's really good pizza called Nuts on awesome. Sports. Nuts yeah. on Sports. Cool. Cause and you, then there's, there's a Palm a, Chester's next to us too. Oh, nice. That's actually, that's good to know. So there's a place you can get a drink right now. Ah, I like that. Because yeah. there's a room that you sometimes rent out above uh, the pub Nuts or the pizza sports. place and have like yeah. a special speakers maybe sometimes. Yeah, we, we had Dr. Second. Yeah, we well, I think we had three. We had Dr. Meldrum, I think twice. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I don't, I think we did at least three of these. So you would buy a ticket and, you know, say it's like 25 bucks or mm-hmm. 40 bucks. I don't actually remember what we charged, but you get free access into the museum. And then yep. the speaker is there selling his books. He'll sign, he'll talk to you, take pictures, whatever. And we yep. let that go for like an hour. And then we all hit over the pizza place upstairs banquet room. And then he does a, you know, one or two hour presentation and then people are yeah. eating and drinking. So and cool. It, I love doing those and I miss it. We can't yeah. do it now, you know, obviously, but when things get better, we'll, We'll be bringing that back because that was super fun. We had Tom Powell. Do you know that guy? I, I've I've heard a few things with Tom in it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love yep. Tom. He's he's one of our friends. One of the first people I met when I lived here, and he or when I moved here. Uh, he's 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 amazing. He's so good at speaking, and he's paranormal, mm-hmm. and that's just proof right there. One of Cliff's best friend, but he's paranormal and doesn't share the same ideas. Oh, but yet that's they can true. Be best friends. Well. Cliff always says that I don't have to agree with someone in order to hang out with them, which I think is a huge thing <laughs> that our culture has forgotten that it's okay to hang out with someone you don't agree with exactly, and not freak out. Like, so I've always respected Cliff for saying that. That's really cool. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, he's, he's just, yeah. He said it, he nailed it on the head there. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. He, he's, that's how Cliff is. We have the strangest friends. Some of them here, <laughs> I, I know, you know what I mean? I, it is like a, a, an array of amazing people who no, no one's like the other, you know, there's, there's just such an array of amazing people in my life and they're all different. And, um, Oh yeah. I, I bet. I love the people out here. <laughs> they're so fun. It's a really cool culture out there. Yeah. 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 You, yeah. you got something cool in Oregon. Definitely. So it's beautiful. Um, that I know there's a, there's a, so there's a lot of people in this community that, you know, they like places like uh, the North American Bigfoot Center and there's others across the, the U S as well. But how can, let's say, let's say there's people that they can't come to your center. What are ways that they can help support you guys? Oh yeah. They right could, uh, well, yeah, they could uh, share posts. Uh, they mm-hmm. can uh, go on and I mean, they can make a donation. I mean, we've had people do that, but that's, we really appreciate it. It's not necessary though. Uh, also there's, um, on our website, we do have a store. Oh, so okay. we sell t-shirts, stickers. I don't awesome. even know what's up there right now, but that's also why Connor's here. So he can help us get more stuff up there. Oh, fantastic. But, uh, we great. ship anywhere, even casts. Uh, Cliff has a certain amount that he has the intellectual property for and that people can get a cast from Cliff. We'll ship it out. So like that. How do you, <laughs> oh boy. It's an intellectual property for a cat. So he can make like copies of the cast. Yeah. Like he has yeah. mother molds of all the originals. And oh, then he has, you know, he has okay. to get their permission. Like we don't sell anything that we don't have the rights to. Oh, that is so smart. So like, yeah. oh man, that's yeah. super, super smart right there. Yeah. That, He's yeah, a smart guy. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, so that that is, uh, you know, some of the ways, I guess, buying stuff or just telling your friends or mm-hmm. sharing posts, like anything. It doesn't totally. have to be buying or supporting us with money, but even just supporting us by sharing or Definitely. liking or whatever, you know, and um, we're, we're probably going to do another Facebook Live and those are fun. I like those. Of- those are fun. Yeah. Um, Thank you. And especially if you're, if you're making new stuff, like, yeah. you know, that's a great time to, to do another one of those, I think, but yeah, very definitely. cool. Yeah. Uh, did Cliff ever figure out like the whole Facebook thing, getting locked out of Facebook or? Nope. He's still using mine. <laughs> maybe Connor, maybe Connor has magic regarding that. Yeah. I think that's yeah, terrible. Perfect. Yeah. I'm going to have to bring that up to him. Maybe he, yeah, maybe he can figure it out. It's been such a weird thing. He just, they can't verify that he lives here. And uh, so I just said, just sign in on mine. And then now mm-hmm. I'm an admin on his page, but like, I, I don't even, I don't even know how totally. to do that. So All yeah. Right. All right. It's very strange. Um, before we uh, transition to something else. So uh, I like to close out the, the main part of the episode or the main episode by, so let's say if people are listening to this and don't know who you are, what is the best way that they can, uh, how would you like them to keep, you know, if they want to keep up to date with what you're doing? Oh, like Kinda on like plug, social media? Plug your, your stuff. Plug myself? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm Melissa Barrickman. I love all things horror and sculptures and Bigfoot, whatever. And you can find me on Instagram, Melissa.Barrickman, Facebook, okay. Melissa Barrickman, Twitter, Melissa Barrickman. <laughs> so that's cool. where I'm at. Yeah. And the North American Bigfoot Center, best way to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. North American Bigfoot Center dot com. If okay. you uh, if anybody out there has a sighting, has a picture, has something, please email us at North American Bigfoot Center at Gmail dot com. Okay. Because Cliff or I read those. So nice. Yeah, and possibly yeah. Connor now. I don't know. But, uh, you know, we, we look into everything. Cliff is actually at a location right now looking uh, not far from here. Uh, there was a, a sighting. So oh, that's really? what right now. Yeah. Very cool. And uh, so we always follow up on any reports. But anyway, wow. other than that, we're uh, North American Bigfoot Center on Instagram, Twitter. I think it's NA Bigfoot Center. Okay. And then Facebook, North American Bigfoot Center. Very it's cool. a very long word or a very long title for a business. but <laughs> it, is, it works, but <laughs> you're exactly right. It makes the Instagram game a little interesting, doesn't it? <laughs> North American Bigfoot Center. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, the acronym is NABC, uh, which is on our logo too. And it stands for National Association of Basketball Corporation. Oh, really? Or something like that. Yeah. It's, it's got to be something. NABC. You know, that's got to be something. Yeah. That must be fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we love it. So uh, thank you for, for coming on. Um, I had interviewed Matt from the Moth Boys podcast and he was like, you should just try to, to, to hit up Melissa. And I was like, I don't know if I could do that. And he's like, Why? just really? try it. Well, you oh. know, cause I'm like, I'm trying to like, like, you know, you work, it, you start at level one, right. With anything that slowly build up. So he, he was like, check it out. And yeah. So thank you for coming on. That oh, was that's awesome. So awesome. I, um, I, I had such a good time. I remember setting up took like an hour and a half with him. I felt so sorry because my internet was so bad that day and that poor oh, guy yeah. just stuck it out with me. So if you talk to him, thank him again for me for being so patient. Um, and he's from Pittsburgh. So I was like so excited so to that. talk to him. Yep. Um, yeah. So no, no problem. And I, I'm, I'm available. I, you know, I'm always available to talk to or interview. I mean, Awesome. So yeah. at this at this point, we have a special thing. Uh, we call it um, uh, Bigfoot Society After Dark. It's kind of like an after podcast, an exclusive thing where we spend a few extra minutes and share some stories. And if you want to hear that uh, kind of extra story time podcast we have, uh, scary stories or whatever, uh, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Bigfoot Society and support the podcast $5 a month. But you also get access to this one. And then there's Mothboy Matt and there's some others. Oh man, they're good. But uh, so at this time, uh, thanks again for coming on, Melissa. We're going to end the podcast and transition into the other one. See you guys. Thank you for having me. Nice talking to you. (laughs) 